Worried about their literacy learning or even their history learning during this difficult time? I've got a great book suggestion for you. Hi, my name's Mel and you're watching Growing Together. So today I want to show you a book which I think is just beautiful. This is specifically designed for anyone that lives in Australia but I think it still works as a really interesting and fascinating book for anyone anywhere really. So this book is called My Place by Nadia Wheatley and Donna Rawlins. So the idea behind this book is that it starts out at an address and gives you lots of information about the address in the 1980 and 1988. So it's got a map of the area, it has got the person living at the address, tells you a little bit about them, their life. And then the next page it goes backwards by 10 years and it does this Every page goes backwards by 10 years and we see different ways that people were living in the same area, the different cultures that moved into those areas and how the areas changed throughout the time, what their lives were like. So it is set in Sydney. In fact, looking at the maps a while ago, I figured out exactly where in Sydney, it's St Peter's and I figured that out because you can see on there for anyone that knows Sydney at all, there's the brickworks. So it's St Peter's station or St Peter's area down near Newtown. Yeah I just think that it's a really fascinating look into like I said the different cultures that you can find in Sydney and Australia, the different ways that those cultures have moved in and, and changed, how that has sort of worked in terms of their um, interactions with others around them. It shows you how history has changed and how we have developed different ways of looking at the world and behaving. It shows you how similar and also how very different our lives are or have become. And it also gives you this little map so it shows you how the city itself has developed and grown. We talk a little bit about the war, so 1918, 1908 and we're starting to get a lot more rural which is really interesting because for anyone that doesn't know anything about Sydney, that area of Sydney is quite a built up area. It's not CBD but it's very much a built up inner city suburb so it's very interesting to think of it as being rural go back even further in time we can see the different ways that people dressed, the different things that they ate, the different expectations and we can still see the brick pits which I think is really really interesting as well. And then the further back in you go, so it started in 1988, it goes all the way back to 1788 and you can see how very different that part of the world was 200 years ago. So we have the bay, it's Aboriginal people living there. So I find it a lot of things about this really really interesting. Um, I think that the illustrations are really in, really beautiful um, and give you a lot of really great insight into the different ways that people were living. Um, I love the map. Again, I give, think that gives you a lot of really cool insight into the way that people lived and the way that the area changed over time. I love the way that it goes backwards. So although 1988 was now a long time ago, it's certainly still within most kids' parents' timeline. So something that we can understand. Um, and then it goes backwards. So it starts with something that's a little bit more familiar and then goes backwards so that we get to see things that are less and less familiar which I think is really lovely as well. And it's written from a child's point of view so it's usually a different child. So for example in 1988 we start with Laura. So it says my name's Laura and this is my place. I turned 10 last week. Our house is the one with the flag on the window. Tony says it shows we're an, on Aboriginal land but I think it means the colour of the earth back home. Mum and Dad live here too and Terry and Lorraine and Auntie Bev and Tony and Diane and their baby Dean. He's my nephew and he's so cute. We come from Burke but Dad thought there'd be more jobs in the city. 
and then it goes on. So we get to see that child's point of view and then 1978, 10 years earlier. This is my place. I'm Mike. I'm nearly seven. I live with my mum and dad and Yaya and Auntie Sophia. Yaya's my grandmother, but I call her that because she's Greek. I don't speak very much Greek, but I kind of always understand what she's saying. We have Easter lunch in the backyard under the grapevine. There's roast lamb and salad, and of course I get chocolate eggs, but we have real eggs too, and we have a competition about cracking them. I'm the best at it. Then we go back to 1938, which is a few years, a few decades backwards. This is my place. I'm Cole. I'm almost 11. In my house, there's Pa and Declan and Bridie and Kath and Jack. My ma got pneumonia when I was little and Paddy's up country somewhere looking for work. Miss Miller next door is kind of like family too. When Kath and Jack got, got married, she gave them her piano. The night the Thompsons got evicted, it was like a party in the street. The bailiffs had stuck all their things out on the footpath and boarded up the house. So Mrs. Thompson knocked down the fence and built a big fire. Everyone brought a pot of stew or some spuds or something and when we'd finished eating, Pa got out his fiddle. It didn't seem awful then, but the next day they went away to the unemployment, unemployed camp and we never see them anymore. So you can see that it's quite different the way that they lived back then. So yeah, I just think this is a really fascinating look at the way that the world evolves, the way that people moving around the world changes things, the way that our outlook on the world changes as people move around and you come into contact with different countries and different cultures. Like I said, even though it is now quite an old book, I still think it's very relevant for looking at history and the way that life changes and the way that cultures change and outlooks change, like I said. So I highly recommend this book just in general because I think it's brilliant, but particularly in this time when we're trying to homeschool, this is a great one to look at when we're thinking about history as well as literacy and it's a great bouncing off point to think about the area that you live and thinking about how it has changed and developed. You could do a lot of research into your neighbourhood and see if you can find out um, the different people that have lived in the area, what it, if it used to be a different, different like more rural like we had in this one how it's changed throughout over the years. Um, they could write, your kids could write reports, they could draw diagrams, they could make a map like we've got here to show the different, they could make several maps to show the different ways it's changed and the different uh, movement of people and whether shops have changed in the area and all of that sort of thing. So there's a lot of jumping up off points for learning and development that could be done from this book. So I wanted to show that to you today because I think it's a really interesting and fantastic resource. There is actually also a website, um, the My Place website, which has a lot of different lesson plans and activities. So I will link that in the description below. It is specifically um, Australia centric, but I imagine that there would be a lot of different resources that are similar for different countries and I would suggest going and looking at the various different museums and university libraries and places like that online and seeing whether they have similar resources. So I will link the My Place website in the description below. Yeah, so that's it for this video. I really hope that everyone is doing as well as they can and is feeling as happy and healthy as they can in this difficult time. As I said in my previous video, I have put my Twitter handle in the description below. Please do feel free to follow me and befriend me on Twitter and I will, I'm happy to chat with you about any concerns you have or just in general. So that's in the description below. And of course, please feel free to comment on this video if you have anything you'd like to suggest or anything you just want to talk about. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel and I'll see you later.